Hello, and welcome to this video on how to draw ray diagrams to study lenses. In this video, I will go through again the converging lens that we did in class, the diverging lens that we discussed during the first section, as well as some more complicated examples involving multiple lenses. Let's begin with the converging lens that we discussed in class. So the first step was to identify the center of the lens. So I'm going to draw a line straight through the middle of my lens to help me see it. Then I draw my first ray. My first ray travels straight through the center of the lens and is undeflected. So my first ray goes straight through my lens and is undeflected. My second ray comes in parallel to the optical axis, which is, remember, this line here. And it comes in parallel and is bent towards the focal point, because this is what focal points of converging lenses do. They bend incoming parallel light towards the focal point. That's what the focal point is. The third ray, I use the focal point that I haven't used yet. So that would be this one. I go from my object through the focal point I haven't used. And that ray is going to come out of the lens parallel. These three rays converge at this point. They do if you draw it very well. And thus we have a real inverted image of the arrow here at this point. We have a real inverted image of the arrow at this point. In class, we saw that if we measured the object distance, O, and the image distance, I, these would be related to the focal length, F, by 1 over I plus 1 over O equals 1 over F being careful to use the sign conventions that we discussed in class and which are now posted in the slides on Moodle. We also discussed in the first section, although we didn't quite get there in the second section, that if you measure the height of your object and the height of your image, you can calculate the magnification. We know that magnification is defined as image height over object height. But if you Look at what values for I and O we measured in class. You can see that this ratio of image height to object height is going to be the same as the image distance over the object distance with a negative sign. We need a negative sign because our image is upside down relative to our object. So that is the convex lens that we did in class. The next lens is the next lens is the diverging lens. So this is a diverging lens. So the procedure we're going to follow is very much the same. I'm going to begin by identifying the middle of my lens. And drawing a line. And then I'm going to draw the same three rays. The first ray traveling from my object straight through the middle of my lens without deflection. My second ray, which comes in parallel to the optical axis. But this time, I use this focal point. This is detailed in the instructions 
of step two. If diverging, use the focal point that you are going away from. So I'm going to use the so I'm going to use the focal point that I'm going away from to draw my outgoing ray. Like that. My third my third rule says to use the focal point I haven't used. Go towards it and come out parallel. So let's do that. This is the focal point I have not used. Let's go towards it. Aim for it. We're not going to get there though because we're going to come out parallel. So we can see that my three rays, one, two, and three, are diverging from each other as they pass through the lens. However, if we trace all three rays backwards, we see that all three rays intersect at this point. So an eyeball over here would see a tiny little arrow at this location. This image is erect because it's right side up, but it's going to be virtual. The photons don't actually come to a point at that location. They just appear to, to our eye over here. Now we can move on to a trying to apply our various expressions. 1 over i, 1 over o, 1 over f. In this case, the focal length is negative. Because this is a diverging lens, so our focal length is negative. This is one of our sign conventions. Our object distance is still positive because our object is on the side of the incoming light. Now let's use this expression to solve for our image. 1 over i plus 1 over 2f is minus 1 over f. 1 over i is minus 1 over f minus 1 over 2f. You get really good at adding fractions in this unit. 1 over i is minus 2 over 2f minus 1 over 2f or minus 3 over 2f, which means our image distance is minus 2 thirds f. This distance is 2 thirds f. We get a minus sign, which is expected because our image is not on the outgoing side. So this is the outgoing side, but our image is here on the incoming side, not the outgoing, so our image distance should be negative. So that all works out. We could then go through and calculate the magnification. Even without calculating it, I can see that my magnification is going to be positive because I am upright or erect image. And I'm going to see that the magnification is going to be less than 1 because image is smaller than object. If I wanted to actually calculate it, I would do minus i over o, which in this case is minus 3f over 2 over 2f. My f's are going to cancel, so my magnification is going to be 3 over 4. 3 over 4. And it will be positive because 
this negative sign and this negative sign are going to cancel each other out. If I wanted to actually calculate the magnification, I would say, all right, minus I over O. If I wanted to actually calculate the magnification, I'd say, OK, magnification is minus I over O, as you can see from the actual measurements we did in class. I know my image distance is minus 2 thirds F. I've got to remember all of my negative signs. My object distance is 2F. The F's cancel, which means my M, seeing that this and this negative sign cancel each other, means my magnification is 2 over 6, or 1 third. My image is about one third the height of my object, which looks pretty good considering my picture. This is the diverging lens. We can then move on to doing systems of lenses in combination. We can then move on to doing systems of lenses in combination. In this problem, I have two lenses, L1 and L2, each one with different focal points, F1 for lens 1 and F2 for lens 2. So I have two lenses in a row. And we can even draw a ray diagram for this situation. So the way you do multiple lenses is you just do everything twice. So I have my object, my little arrow. I'm going to draw my first ray. My first ray goes straight through the lens without deflection. I'm going to draw my first ray, which goes straight through the lens without deflection. I'm then going to draw my second ray, which comes in parallel. These are converging lenses, so I bend towards the focal point I'm going to. Like that. In order to do this type of situation with multiple lenses, I just do everything twice. So I start with my object and my first ray, and my first ray just goes straight through my first lens, undeflected. My second ray comes in parallel. These are converging lenses as indicated by the tips of the arrows. And so I go through the focal point that I am moving towards. And then on my third ray, I use the focal point I haven't used yet, which is this close one. Aim for it. And come out parallel. And thus, I have an image from my first lens here. This would be my object distance. This would be my image distance. And we can see that our first image is real and inverted. And it looks like our magnification has an absolute value greater than 1, but it's upside down, which means our magnification is less than 
negative one. I'm just looking at the height of my initial arrow relative to the height of my image, and my image looks taller. So now that I've done the first lens, now I move on to the second. And I just repeat the entire process using my image as my new object. So for this one, I draw my first ray coming off the tip of the image, going straight through without deflection. I draw my second ray, which comes in parallel and aims for my focal point. And then my third ray, I say, OK, I have used this focal point. This is the one I haven't used yet. So aim for it. Well, to aim for it, I have to come backwards. Need to make my lens a little longer. That's OK. Need to make my lens a little longer. That's OK. But it would be coming from it. And come out. parallel like that when it finally hit my lens. Now these rays don't seem to do anything unless of course I trace them back like this and if I trace them back drawn things very, very nice and carefully. We see that they actually all converge here. And so I get a very big inverted second image. So here's my first image which I use as my object for my second lens to give me my second image. Looking at all of our nomenclature for this second iteration, this would be my object distance. Notice it's measured from the lens, and it would be positive. This would be my image distance, which is negative because it's on the incoming side of lens 2. And my focal length would still be positive. My mag because my focal length is for lens 2, it's this distance. And it's a converging lens, so my focal length is positive. Finally, looking at the magnification from first to second, because now I'm comparing my first image to my second image, my magnification is clearly bigger than one, because the image gets even bigger. And both my object, my first image, which is now acting as my object, and my second image, they're both upside down. So they're pointing the same way. And so my image is, my magnification is greater than 1. It's positive. My final image is virtual 
because the rays do not actually converge at this point. And it is erect relative to first image, but but inverted relative to object. So you'll do one more practice with multiple lenses at the beginning of next class, follow it up with working with mirrors. This concludes this video.